Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Uh, yesterday I saw exciting news uh, from Python uh, US um, conference about PyScript. Uh, PyScript is a new framework uh, which is uh, in its early days, but uh, it's uh, already available to public and anyone can, can run it. And the main thing of uh, PyScript is that it, would, uh, it actually allows to run uh, Python inside um, HTML directly in the browser. It's completely serverless, and this means that uh, your Python logic now can execute in the browser like in a virtual machine, and you don't need to run uh, server side. So for some use cases, probably you still need to run server side, right? But uh, of course, there are some use cases, uh, cool use cases where now you don't need to rely on the server. You can run the entire thing uh, on the browser, and this is very exciting. Uh, because uh, based on the um, release notes, they say that uh, in the future they'll develop um, support for rich UI, uh, so potentially we could uh, build some uh, nice UIs with that, uh, with that framework as well, and we could run ML and data science specific libraries now directly in the browser like uh, NumPy, Pandas, and so on. And different visualization things, we could build different uh, dashboards, and we could run uh, ML processing on the browser directly through the Python script. So we don't need to uh, run it anymore on JavaScript probably, but uh, we could run directly on, on, on the Python. And it's not only in the browser, it could run also Node.js instance uh, on the backend, the same code. So if you code um, with PyScript uh, for the browser, the same thing uh, could run on, on, on the backend as well. So let's... Uh, look uh, into it and, and see how it runs. So first of all, there's a, a blog uh, published uh, with uh, high-level information about PyScript, um, what it is, uh, how, uh, how it runs, and uh, what are the main points of PyScript, and uh, basically explanation for the developers. So I would recommend to read this uh, blog uh, to understand more uh, more about it. And I'll put a link uh, to all the resources that I'm talking about below the video for your convenience. Okay, and there's a website, a dedicated website for PyScript, and basically you can download a PyScript package from here or from the GitHub, and then you could build executable, and then you could reference JS and CSS files for PyScript within the HTML page, and that's all it runs. Uh, uh, there's another way uh, to run it. Uh, if you don't want to build, you could just uh, refer to uh, through CDN to the hosted JS uh, PyScript environment, and you could refer to uh, CSS file and JS file from CDN and uh, load it uh, out of the box without building anything locally. And this is how I'm running it uh, to test it on on my own desktop. Okay, this is a GitHub page. Uh, GitHub. Um, um, obviously a repository for the PyScript, and uh, this nice guide called Getting Started, and uh, here they explain everything, how uh, you could uh, load um, PyScript from CDN, uh, how you could uh, use uh, PyScript tag, and so on. All the essential information is included over here. And obviously, <clears throat> I think it's stated in the main re readme file at the end over here that uh, this is ex experimental project and uh, you should expect, expect things to be changed. And uh, by the way, it's tested only in Chrome at the moment. Uh, so if you run examples, you should uh, play probably in Chrome as, as recommended. Okay, and let's uh, jump into the visual code. And I tested a few examples from uh, from the uh, from the PyScript repo. Uh, you could run it on your own as well, of course. And what I did for all the examples that uh, I tested, I just replaced link and script uh, tags to point uh, to CDN, not to the uh, local uh, JS and CSS files to be uh, able to load them automatically from CDN. And this is the first example, hello world. We see it's a uh, standard HTML page. We refer to the PyScript over here. And this is the PyScript tag usage. Uh, inside this PyScript tag, Within HTML, um, we have uh, Python code, so we get uh, date uh, from a standard Python library date time, and we get the current date, and then we uh, print it out. And based on documentation, when we have a Python script uh, inside 
um, PyScript tag, then uh, it could produce one output. So whatever output you have at the end, it will be printed and uh, inserted into the uh, HTML uh, final page and displayed to the user. And they saw uh, on the getting started guide, they also say this, there, there are ways to return multiple things. Uh, if you de define placeholders in HTML, and then you could uh, uh, push data to those uh, placeholders. Uh, and in this way, you could return multiple things from the script. Okay, so let's run it and see how it works. I just, uh, this is a static um, HTML page, so you could open it uh, directly if you want, or I just run it for the uh, visual code opening in the browser, uh, this uh, static HTML file, doesn't matter. So <clears throat> we get uh, back the result, and this is the uh, current day, 1st of May, and uh, 4 p.m., uh, my time. And <clears throat> in the log of the visual code, we see lots of stuff uh, loaded behind the scenes. And based on the docu documentation, PyScript uh, runs on uh, WSM, and um, this means all the environment when you load um, uh, this PyScript tag, um, it prepares all the environment uh, behind the scenes and uh, basically creates uh, probably a Python executable environment and so on, and then it executes the script. So initial load, um, as you saw right now, it takes a few moments, but then as soon as the environment is loaded, uh, it works uh, quite fast. Okay, so that's one example, and let's see, there's another one which uh, I think was quite interesting. This is about uh, WebGL. Uh, now through Python, we could uh, execute, um, uh, we could leverage WebGL quite easily. And this is this example shows um, how it works. It loads uh, some 3D objects and uh, they're uh, uh, rotating that you could uh, control with the mouse like that. So this is, Quite exciting for the visual applications. Then let's see this anti-gravity. Let's see this example, what it's about. Okay, this one doesn't load. Okay, so we'll skip it. Okay, I didn't replace um, this one. Okay, I didn't test that one, so let's leave it alone. Uh, volume. Okay, let's see how how this one runs. Okay, we can see uh, it loads. Okay, this is uh, it loads map and also it's loading um, pandas library and uh, from pandas library it loads a CSV file and translates CSV file I think to the uh, pandas data structure and then all this uh, all those green colors are coming from the uh, layer on top of the uh, map and uh, values for this layer are coming from the CSV file loaded from uh, pandas. So if you look over here, we see that. Uh, we imported pandas library and then with pandas we loaded data from the csv file state data and based on the state data uh, layer uh, another layer on top of the map was displayed and we also saw that initially there was some wait time probably because it needs to load all the infrastructure the wasm and so on and afterwards um, it uh, renders the data okay and this one is like a, something more similar like a dashboard let's see how it looks like uh, let's run it, and while it loads, we see the output in the log. Uh, quite a lot of different libraries loaded, uh, NumPy, Pandas, uh, and so on and so on. And it takes time to to load it. Let's wait, and yeah, then we should see uh, dashboards. <clears throat> yeah, so definitely the infrastructure is um, quite heavy and as you saw on the readme file that uh, at the moment it's experimental and probably it's not production uh, ready yet. So uh, yeah, we should not pay uh, too much attention to this initial delay. Uh, probably this should be optimized in the future. Now we've got the dashboard. This is a chart displayed and 
if we open it like that, we could uh, say we want more clusters maybe. Can we move that? Yeah, to four and then the chart is updated. Then there's a table behind, uh, below the chart, and uh, it comes with uh, pagination. We could go to another page and so on. Yeah, and one more example is the game, Mario. Uh, let's run it as well. See how it works. Okay, this one started quite fast and Actually, yeah, it's it's still starting. Okay, let's restart it. Something happened wrong. Let's see, it starts now. Okay, it's it's moving. I can. I can walk around and so on. Yeah, so it took also some, there was some wait time, but uh, at the end everything was loaded and it was working. So to summarize, uh, PyScript uh, idea is great uh, because it allows us to run our uh, Python implementations uh, in the browser, uh, server, serverless, uh, without uh, reliance on the server. Uh, current uh, PyScript implementation is experimental and I'm sure it will be improved. Uh, at this moment, uh, it's a bit slow on the initial load, but uh, then it's working fast. Uh, probably this is related to WSM uh, and Python infrastructure initial initialization. But um, in general, it works fine, and hopefully this uh, few those issues will be improved. And uh, hopefully in the future, we'll also have um, opportunity to run some uh, rich UI components to build uh, e easy and uh, uh, in a reliable way, uh, uh, rich UI interfaces. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.